Hi, today we will talk about polarization of light. So today we will talk about the concept of polarization, how to observe the polarization phenomena and how intensity of light changes with polarization, method of polarization and Brewster's law. So polarization is a concept which we can simply understand by an experiment or with an example. So suppose we have a wave here. Right. Uh, so suppose we have this string and we are making a wave like this uh, on the string and these kinds of wave are called transverse wave. And it is passing through two boxes where the slits are in the same direction of the oscillation. Right. So the wave will actually pass through. That is clear. Now suppose we turn around this slit and make it like that perpendicular to the direction. And as now you can see the wave cannot pass through because will block the oscillation and it will kill the wave right now suppose we have a box here and we have two three or maybe several waves in different directions so one is like this and one is perpendicular to this and things like that right now the wave which is in the direction of the slit will only pass through right so what's happening here is that all the oscillation point are happening are confined to a plane Right. So if we draw a plane here, right, the wave is basically oscillating into this plane only, right, not perpendicular to it or any other direction. So all the light wave is basically up and down in a plane, right, all the oscillation is happening in the plane. When this happens, we call it plane polarization, right. So let's write it down. So say when the direction of the oscillations of all points of a ray, right? So this is a ray and all points in the ray of a transverse wave basically lie in the same plane okay the wave is said to be plane polarized okay so all the oscillations are happening in a same plane and hence the wave is called plane polarized wave. Now let's move on and we know that uh, the light is an electromagnetic wave and Maxwell had a question about this. So now all this electric field is basically sort of oscillating in this direction or in this direction right which is perpendicular to each other uh, sorry uh, directly opposite to each other right. So in this direction all the electric field is oscillating and perpendicular to it is basically the magnetic field right so this is the behavior or, or nature of the light that's why it is called electromagnetic wave now we are mainly concerned about the electric field right and how it is changing so if all the electric field is basically like a wave we said is in the same plane right is in the same plane like this, pa this piece of paper right so all the is in the same plane when you look at it from the front we'll see that all the electric field is basically oscillating in the same plane not on this side or this side or this side right but only in one singular plane we call it a plane polarization of a light wave right so plane again emphasizing we are only concerned with electric field okay we are not concerned with magnetic one now suppose it is making certain angle right so it is making let's say 60 degree angle from here right so now it is a plate polarized uh, wave at 60 degree right so it can make certain angle uh, from from the z axis and we can say that you know uh, the light is sort of instead of vertical basically it is polarized in this direction for example right so 
as we move on you'll, you'll get more clarity right so here uh, suppose we have a polarizer here right so some light is coming and basically it is all polarizing in this direction only in this direction it is called the vertical polarized light or plane polarized light right now generally the light waves they they sort of propagate in a particular direction and there is a lot of uh, you basically have polarization happening in all the directions right so that is called unpolarized light right so when uh, sunlight when this is coming from the sun or or from a, a luminous source right it is sort of unpolarized right so electric fields are vibrating in all the direction right uh, now there are ways we can sort of make a polarized light right like like we did here right so we have this uh, this box and, and the wave we are in different different direction we sort of confine them with certain things so that the wave which are only into this direction can pass through right that's how we make a polarized uh, light as well right so we can we can do that through uh, certain crystals and things like that that we are going to explain now uh, as we are here right so when a ray of light is sort of coming you know uh, through this uh, let's say box right so this box is called a polarizer why because the ray of light which is sort of coming is not polarized right have vibrations in all the direction after passing through it sort of becomes plane polarized right so this is called polarizer and this box right which determines that do we have a polarized light or not is called an analyzer okay so if this light is sort of polarized right then it cannot pass when it is perpendicular to it right so so we, we know that the light is polarized by analyzing this. Now we can change this angle of a box, right, at a certain angle, and some of it will pass and things like that will happen. And that we are going to observe in the in the next experiment uh, I'll walk you through, right. So here we have a, a very simple experiment. Uh, and this experiment shows that light is a transverse wave uh, and it, it can be polarized. So here we have a, a source of light, right. And here we have certain crystal T1, right. So certain crystals, can absorb so suppose we have this unpolarized light right so electric field is in all the directions right when it passes through a crystal it allows a light to pass through only one and makes it polarized right so certain crystals have this property we can make the light polarized because it matches with the direction and vibration of the molecules in that particular direction right suppose this crystal is making the light polarized in this direction okay now it passes through that so basically it is our polarizer right passes through that and then we have another crystal here which is sort of allows the light to pass through only in this direction right so this is our analyzer right the same material basically you can switch between them right so it's the same device you can switch between the polarizer and analyzer and now let's start rotating this analyzer right so if both the vibrations are in the same direction basically the light inset intensity is the highest right as we start rotating it right so we, we started rotating it basically with certain angle the light intensity will become lower and when it is at the opposite angle right no light can basically pass through no polarized light which is uh, polarized from here will pass through and basically the intensity will become zero which is darker right you can observe this through experiment and hence it is a proof that light is a transverse wave and goes through polarization uh now let's look at what happens at an angle right suppose we have a vertically polarized light uh, passing through and now we have another polarizer which is at an angle theta right so this is a direction of polarization now what should be the intensity of light when it passes through it right uh, so here is the light wave right so it is sort of electric field intensity is e and now after passing through this the only this component will pass right which is sort of e cos theta right and rest all will be blocked so we know that the intensity is sort of square of field so it is going to be i will be i naught cos square theta right so when a polarized light passes through another polarizer at an angle theta right the the final intensity becomes i naught cos theta okay remember this uh, and another one when we have unpolarized light and it passes through uh, another polarizer which has is at angle theta 
basically what will happen that the intensity will now become i not by 2 okay it is because you have this uh, light in all the directions they cut each other and what remains is that half of the intensity intensity right so it will become i not by 2 so this is uh, an important formula uh, you will get questions from this in your exam so please remember this and i will just show that uh, with an example here right suppose we have this unpolarized light now it is passing through this transmission axis it could be this this or any axis the intensity will become i not by 2 okay so rule of half rule of half is valid in case of unpolarized light now what will be the direction the direction will be, will be the axis on which the polarizer is set right so now it is going to be in this direction similarly in our last example this was unpolarized light the intensity become i naught by 2 and the direction is to the transmission axis of the polarizer right so it does two things it reduces the intensity by half and changes the direction right so two things are happening it's worth remembering reduces intensity and change in angle or polarization right so two things are happening now this i naught by 2 intensity light will come here and pass through this uh, analyzer which is at angle theta right so now what will happen here we'll have that cosine law so it will say that whatever the intensity is coming in which is i1 i will give you final i will be i1 cos square theta and i1 is basically i by 2 so it is going to be i by 2 cos square theta i naught by cos square theta so that will be i final so we'll get questions like this where we have different polarizers and we will need to find out the final intensity we'll do the problem set then it will become uh, much clear uh, now here all these polarizers are basically working through what we call polarization by absorption okay so we have certain crystal in which uh, all the molecules are sort of align themselves in a particular direction and they sort of vibrate uh, uh, along with the electric field in that particular direction and hence the light can pass through in that direction only and rest all is blocked right so it is absorbing the lights in different uh, angle and only allowing a particular uh, plane to pass through right so this is called polarization by absorption we can also experience polarization through scattering right so here is the sun the ray of light is getting scattered through the uh, molecules here right and scattered light if you're sitting on the beach looking at the sky you will see a blue sky right because blue lights get po uh, polarized earlier than uh, sort of the red lights but if you're seeing the sun from here basically the setting sun looks red because all the lights is getting through and, and the red light for comes first so basically you see transmitted light is unpolarized and mostly red in case of reflection also when the ray of light sort of get reflected from the surface right it gets horizontally polarized and and that's why you see the blue uh, water and blue sky right so by observ by absorption you can have polarization by sort of scattering third is through reflection and then you have other uh, double reflection kind of a uh, prisms and material through which you can have uh, polarization right so there are four ways of doing that uh, we'll look at uh, the reflection one in more detail and that will take us to the Bristol's law okay so here uh, we have this ray of light which is unpolarized so it is in all the directions as you can see right it's coming here getting incident on the reflecting surface right so here the refractive index is n a and here the refractive index after refraction the surface right is n b and now the ray of light is coming like this getting refracted and also getting reflected okay so both the things we know uh, that this happens and this is the normal on which is happening right so we know that the ray of light coming like this through Snell's law will be on the same normal and also the refraction the ray of light will be on the same normal it will get refracted now when the refraction happens basically you know the ray of light which passes are partially polarized right so it also has uh, like perpendicular and and other angles right but at a particular angle when the ray of light is incident at a particular angle 
is called let's say theta b right the reflected rays become totally polarized and only the e perpendicular to this plane right or parallel to the surface is able to pass through it right so only perpendicular to this normal will pass through it so it's called total polarization and now it will look like this right only look like this here it will look like this after refraction right so this angle at that particular instance angle is basically called brewster's angle and we can find that using snell's law right so here we have this ray of light coming and this angle is theta b and the condition for the the complete or total polarization is that the angle between the reflected ray and the reflected ray should be 90 degree okay so assuming that we know that if this is theta b by snell's law this is also going to be theta b right and then let's call it theta i which is the angle of uh, refraction okay so this angle is coming the same getting reflected and then we have plain uh, complete polarization in this uh, for the reflected ray so we can write the snell's law very simply here it says that this n a into sine theta b right which is a uh, bristol's angle and that is going to be equal to n b into sine theta angle of refraction okay now this angle plus 90 degree plus this is going to be 180 right so theta b plus 90 plus angle of refraction is going to be 180 which means that angle of refraction is going to be 90 minus theta b okay we are just taking it on this this side and now we can put it back here we have n a sine of theta b going to be n b sine of 90 minus theta b right 90 minus theta b is cos theta so n b cos theta b is going to n a sine theta b and then so we do that this divided by this basically we have tan theta b is going to be n b by n a and this angle right this theta b is called Brewster's angle and we can state Brewster's law as a simple phenomena I write it down for you so what is called Brewster's law it was observed experimentally by uh, Mr. Brewster's in 19 1900 so the name was given for that so the reflected light right so the reflected light is completely polarized when the reflected and refracted beams are at right angle okay this is the first thing right so so uh, complete 100 percent polarization will happen when the reflected right and the reflected right will be at the right angle the direction second part the direction is important the direction of polarization is parallel to the reflecting surface or say normal to the plane of right so 
after polarization what will be the direction the direction will be sort of perpendicular to this surface which means it is parallel to this surface right so let me draw that in 3d and you will be able to visualize uh, it more correctly so here we have right so this is our uh, plane of incidence and this is a plane surface right so here the final ray will be basically perpendicular to the surface so we can only see sort of only see on this side we cannot see on that side right so it is 90 degree to this surface right 90 degree to this surface to this plane okay and it is parallel to the reflecting surface so both cases are true and that's what is called uh, Brewster's law uh, you can get questions on Brewster's law uh, quite a good problem can be formed including Snell's law and Brewster's law and we expect to solve few problems uh, in our next video where we will sort of showcase uh, and handle problems related to polarizations and Brewster law if you want more videos you can go to deep dive physics dot com register and you can watch uh, all these videos without any advertisement and also we provide one-to-one -one guidance and uh, tuition in small batches if you are interested please get in touch and we